Me, Mouth, and a mutual friend of ours who also Josh knows. We we ate at uh, Burger King, but only me and our mutual friend ate there. Mouth did not eat there. Later that night, we were at a party, and uh, our mutual friend spends like two hours throwing up in the bathroom. And we're like, whoa, dude, like what a lightweight. And then uh, like half an hour after that, I was like, hey, guys, I got to go home and uh, spend like the next four days throwing up and pooping everywhere. But... Got better. Thankfully, this time, no vomit. That's that's a positive. It's definitely better to just be pooping than pooping and vomiting. But still really bad. Imagine how many people the Burger King made sick that day. Yeah, but I feel like it's honestly like um, it's on me for eating at Burger King. Like that's one where I'm like, well, what did I expect? Like food that's safe to eat? Food that wouldn't poison me for a week? I mean, if you want food that's not gonna poison you for a week, don't eat it at Burger King. I mean, that's just a gimme. It's okay to blame the victim as long as you're the victim. Does Burger King really... And, and this is a real question from someone who does not eat at Burger King anymore for what should now be obvious reasons. Does Burger King really grill the burgers or do they just like synthetically add grill marks to the patties? They're flame broiled? Okay, so they're... What, but are they... I've never seen the back of house at a at a Burger King. Are There's no way there's real flames wicking up in the back of a, a Burger King, right? Isn't it predominantly staffed by like high school students? I, I, people are like, there is, there is, there's no, like, open flames? I mean, you can get a job at Burger King when you're, like, 14 years old. You're not even allowed to, like, go to a chemistry lab yet. It's like one of those Quiznos ovens. Oh, so you, you feed the burger patty onto it, and then it gets, the machine licks the flames. Okay. That's, you know what, slightly more understandable. It's kind of like a magazine you load into the broiler. Magazine. Look at this guy. It's called a clip. The, how am I supposed to take your opinions on uh, burger regulation seriously when you got something so major like the nomenclature of how the burgers are loaded into the machine wrong, you dummy? Holy cow. And you expected me to take you seriously. Holy cow, an actual joke? An actual joke? He's kind of back? Perma ban them? I would never. It, unless they started saying... I think you're over-exaggerating your symptoms and added me like 10 times. You remember Dr. Flopper? I do, I remember Dr. Flopper. One of the interesting things, and I, I mean this sincerely, man. And I'm sure Josh can relate, is, is he's here as well. But like, you know, since we've been doing this for such a long time, there's like known quantities, known entities, I should say, in the community. And some of you, I feel like I've like grown up with you. Like, you started and you were, like, a little kid watching the stream and you're like, Hey, I'm so lol, so happy to be here! And then, you know, it was, like, 2016 and you went through your, like, uh, you know, troll, like, Proud Boys phase. And we were like, ooh, scary. And then, like, a year after that, you went to undergrad in, like, you know, a college away from your hometown. And you were like, hey, I'm sorry about like all that messed up stuff that I said like a year ago. And we're like, I, I don't want to say it's okay, but like I understand like as people grow up, they, they go through stuff like that, okay? And like, you know, just try to think about that in the future so it like doesn't happen again. And then, you know, now you're here like, oh, I'm a software engineer. I'm a front end web dev. I'm a software engineer. I'm a front end web dev. Everybody goes through the... Everybody goes through the cycle, man. OMG, me, me. Dude, I can't... This is so rude. But did you see the photo of the guy who thought that... The Google engineer who thought that he developed the sentient AI? The All I can say is that he's dressed like, uh, like the villain from Wild Wild West. Even though the photo was not taken either on the set of Wild Wild West or in the antebellum years in the United States of America. Yes, he, he looks like Loveless. Now, he's not piloting an enormous robotic spider. I just feel like 
And this, I should be better than this. I should judge him on the quality of his chat logs rather than his particular choice of attire. That being said, I do think it's one of those things where you're like, I wish I'd seen this photo before I read the story. Because then I would definitely have gone into it with a slightly higher level of scrutiny, I think. Because, and, and again, there's no way to... I'm just gonna say it, this is rude. And I'm owning that it's rude. But after seeing the way that this guy chooses to dress himself, it does call his judgment into question. Like, it, um, imagine if you were sitting, uh, you were about to go in front of a judge, and you saw somebody skirt into the parking lot and do like 10 donuts in a Ford Mustang while Whitesnake was playing, and then like flip off a bunch of people in the parking lot and, and then get out and like a bunch of like fast food cups exploded out of his car when he opened the driver's side door. And then like that was your public defender. Wouldn't you be like, you know, just cause you're like the worst driver of all time or the best driver of all time, that doesn't mean you can't be like an, a good lawyer. But I think personally, I would, I would ask for a, a recess if possible. That was a cosplay photo. Was it? He, he looks like he was just like at the aquarium or something like that. It wasn't the photo in front of like a fish tank or something. He might have just been at like a seafood restaurant. I don't know. I'm I'm on a seafood diet. I see food. I eat it. Dude, I'm on like a seafood diet. I see food. Food. I don't really eat it. Although I gotta be honest. Yesterday, Subway, you do not have my permission to use what I'm about to say in any promotional materials. I will sue you. Your safety is not guaranteed. Just like you sued the CBC. It was yesterday was the first time I kind of knew that I was gonna be okay if I just gave us some time. And the signal that made me realize that I knew I was going to be okay was when my body was like, eat a foot-long Subway sandwich. It was like the old lady from the quarry was whispering in my ear. She was like, you know, Subway. Silas? Subway. And I got to be honest as well. I had never been, like I went to this Subway at like, 11.03 a.m. I was so hungry. I hadn't eaten anything really in like two days. And I had the best sandwich artist of my entire life. I don't even know how to, like I was so fucked up. I was like almost in tears. I was, I also got a sandwich for Kate. I was like, I don't know if I can handle this cognitively ordering two different sandwiches at the same time. I'm like, I'm more than 10 minutes away from home. The bathroom might have a code. I might be crapping my pants in here. She was actually like a, a sandwich, I don't even know what to say, like a sandwich goddess. She walked me through every step of those. She was a sandwich saint. That's a perfect way to describe it. I just, I, I didn't order optimally. I stumbled out like a completely non-sequential uh, list of sandwiches. I was like, I want a foot long Italian white oven roasted chicken breast. Sweet onion, chicken teriyaki, six inch Italian white. And she was like, you know what? This guy is fucked up. <laughs> but I, I can rearrange the order of what you said and figure out what you want. That's, that's maybe the best indicator. I don't even know if this is good. That's maybe the best indicator of uh, how messed up I was yesterday. I was so messed up at uh, Subway. I didn't feel mentally like I was well equipped enough to order two sandwiches with two different kinds of bread. I self-talked my way, like in the lineup for Subway, I was like, you know what, Slugger, I don't think you're a two kinds of bread guy today. I think you might just be, uh, you might just have to take the L on this one and get the same kind of bread on both sandwiches. I don't know if you can manage that many moving parts right now. Just online order? No, I hate the online ordering at Subway. At some places it works, but like the Subway here, they have uh, they have the rack, okay? Where you can pick up the online orders without human interaction. But after like a week of getting online orders, they then moved the rack behind the counter. 
So instead of just walking in and being like, hey, I'm going to pick up my sandwich. I have to like walk in, wait in line for like a second or 10 minutes sometimes and then be like, I'm just here to pick up my online order, which always drives me crazy because like it's the same. Oh, I'm back, baby. Did I'm getting the same vibes as the self-checkout system. They're like, people would just steal it. You have to put them under lock and key. Okay, but there's just a bunch of chips and drinks sitting there anyway. Like, they don't have the chips and drinks under lock and key. The chips and drinks are just sitting there in the center of the damn store. You could just walk in and go, why don't I just put everything behind lock and key then? It doesn't make any sense, man. Don't give them any ideas. Well, that's... Oh, I took the wrong item by mistake. That's the thing. There's, there's other... Um, like places, they're not sandwich places, but there's other places like I order from for lunch now. They do an online order system that just works on the honor system. You walk into the store, there's a rack with orders, you find the one that has your name, you walk out with it. Literally, uh, mine has never been stolen. I've probably ordered from there like 20 times. If my order got stolen 5% of the time, honestly, I think this is a fair price to pay for the amount of time that I've saved not having to wait behind someone in line being like, and lettuce and tomato. And, but I do, I'd like to apologize to the subway uh, staff. Cause I always try to, and this is why I spend so much time on r slash subway. I try to be a good subway orderer I always put the bread first when I'm mentally capable of doing so because I know that that's what you have to get out of the, the proofer or the, the oven or whatever. And then the, the sandwich type itself is secondary. I always try to lead with, I'll have this many sandwiches, you know, so that you know what you're getting a handle on. But where I had let you down, and I only realized this yesterday, is when you get the sandwich to the past the, the cheese and toasted section, they say everything, and I always thought that was an insane question until I actually, you know, because I think this illness has actually like rewired my brain a little bit. I got like a little bit more like self-awareness. Then I realized that every time they asked me everything, I was almost being offended. I was like, no. And then I would proceed to just list everything in the ingredient uh, deck that they have in front of them except for like two things so I was basically just saying no to their completely reasonable request and then making them rebuild it from zero but like with no green peppers I like green peppers I just don't think I mean they, they're kind of a little waxy on a sandwich it's just my two cents though so yeah I think I gotta be like an everything except X sort of guy for sure Oh, I put olives on. I mean, if you don't, I mean, I will say everything is like a little much. It's exactly one to two things too much, in my opinion. Get the peppers added before toasting. I can't do that. I have too much self-awareness. I can't be the guy going into Subway with the secret menu hacks, man. It's just, just give me like a number six. Let's just go. Look, I'm not here because I think that I'm under the illusion I'm going to get the best sandwich of all time. Just let me get my, my foot of shame. We'll pretend we don't know each other if we ever cross in the street. Extra bacon or no? On it, I mean, with gas prices this high, if you're getting bacon, double meat at Subway, like, honestly, I don't know what to tell you. Minus two, minus two. It's expensive, though. In this economy? Cacio e Pepe in this economy? Also, the sub... I've never had it, but the, the appearance of the Subway bacon is not inspiring. <laughs> to me. <laughs> it doesn't look right. It looks like... like, And I love prosciutto, don't get me wrong, but it looks like prosciutto, and then they like drew... They had like a bacon paints that they like rolled on top of it or something like that don't you <laughs> you doing it you can't make me laugh because when you laugh i i wish that this was a joke and when i laugh my butthole hurts because i've had to poop so much over the last three days when it just this message from chibli 
Hello, can my friend Yukon suck get a <laughs> shout out on stream? <laughs> oh. oh, man. Whew. I, that is. That is good stuff, dude. That is good stuff. <laughs> you can't I'm, I'm losing it. Or maybe I, I think I'm actually refinding it. Speaking of satire, does anyone want to um, buy some land in the in the blockchain hills? You remember there was like so there was that crypto island thing that like a lot of people thought was really cool and then like some people were making fun of and they were like you could live here and there's like a place where like you know like if you're not that based you could like live here but if you're like super based you could live in the blockchain hills i might know a guy who bought one of the 12 plots of land in the blockchain hills and he's going through it right now he recently came down with food poisoning um and he's really it would really help him out a lot if you could someone would just pick up this deed for the land in the blockchain hills before you say no, okay, there's only 12 plots of land in the blockchain hills. And it's real, wait, this has got to be a secret room. There's only 12 plots. Does that, I haven't told you where it is yet. I haven't told you what it is yet, but there's only 12 of them. Don't you want it now? How's the internet there? I don't know. I thought it was one of those things where they were just going to figure it out later, I think. Like Theranos. I'll give you 350 for it. Well, it's not me, it's a friend of mine. But you could just shoot me your business proposal. <laughs> yes, one of the plots is owned by Snoop Dogg. One of them is owned by Shaquille O'Neal now. I believe Anthony Hopkins may be a neighbor of yours at some point uh, in the future. Who introduced... NFTs to Anthony Hopkins, man. This is like, the dude is like 86 fucking years old. Now you got him, he's like Anthony Hopkins dot Ethan his Twitter profile. It's like elder abuse. This isn't even like an anti-crypto thing. He's just too, he's too old to allow him to do that. I'm sorry, it's like actually, like it's offensive, but like he, he doesn't know, man. You can't have Anthony Hopkins. You can't introduce this guy to NFTs. Then have him putting the dot Ethan in his, in his Twitter handle, dude. He's He was Hannibal Lecter. Like, let him live with some dignity. Did you eat some frozen chicken? I didn't. I also, someone said that there was a, a Canadian recall on raspberries that had norovirus. I have just literally wasted my space bar. Um, but that was only in New Brunswick, and even if you don't know that I live in BC, you should know that I don't live in New Brunswick, because nobody lives in New Brunswick. So I was saved from, from the raspberries at least. We, we go searching for another culprit. Same thing with organic strawberries. Okay, I'd like you to speak on that, because I eat those, um, at least five times a week. <laughs> at a minimum. Like you to provide some information on this organic strawberries uh, discourse here. It was hepatitis A on the strawberries. I was in, I'm in Seattle though. That sounds bad. I'm gonna guess that I don't have that because I don't want to have that. I'm just gonna hope that one works itself out. Seems to have only been in Alberta and, Sus and Saskatchewan. Okay, saved, saved. Maybe. <laughs> that one's more liver related, right? NBC, oh no, dude. Symptoms of hepatitis A include diarrhea, nausea, dark colored urine, a yellowing of the eyeballs. Okay, look, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to make light of this. Diarrhea, nausea, yes. I didn't have my eyeballs. Don't make me laugh, dude! I think my eyeballs are okay. 
<laughs> you know what thought also stuck with me? Is like two weeks ago I was randomly itchy, right? And I was trying to diagnose it with chat, and then somebody said cytotoxic megacolon, and I googled cytotoxic megacolon, and it's like a damn nightmare, right? It's like a... it's horrible. And then... I was like, how ironic would it be if I fucking died due to cytotoxic megacolon or something like that? Like a week after not making fun of it, really, but like poking fun at it. And then also like a week after saying you guys have permission to make fun of me for dying in ironic ways. It would be like the perfect storm. I actually like kind of came to terms with it. It was like, it, you know, it, it at least would be an interesting bit to go out on. Don't call it a cytotoxic megabyte. <laughs> oh, oh. Do you have a will? Uh, no, but like, I, and again, this is no joke, but Wednesday night, I was like, I should make one. Like, pretty soon, I think. Just in case. Not because I think this is gonna kill me, but just because, you know, just, just going to the bathroom that much made me realize, like, you know, how fragile uh, the human body is. You should leave Caden the baby some money. Yeah, the thought crossed my mind. Um, I was, <laughs> was going to be one of the things I would probably put in the will. <laughs> I've been thinking about it, at least. What about chat? Well, as you know, I um, taking profit is unethical, so... Whenever anybody subscribed to me over like the last 10 years, I put I wrote down a little slip of paper with their name and how many months they've been subscribed and I put it in a big ledger book and then I popped it into VTI, Vanguard's total US stock market uh, index fund. And then I'm going to redistribute it all upon my demise. Not. <laughs> oh, everybody loves investing now. Normally when I talk about investing, everybody's like, oh, minus two, minus two, bad look, bad look. All of a sudden, you're getting the rewards and everybody's excited to talk about the legacy of Jack Bogle. Well, well, well. The good news is you can still get in. I got this dynamite piece of property I'm repping for a friend of mine who's a little bit under the weather right now. It's a little house. Well, it's not a house. It's like a piece of land that you could build a house on in the blockchain hills it's a community of like-minded individuals who all share similar interests passions and and hobbies i don't exactly know where it is it's on one of the islands i think it might be in puerto rico <clears throat> 10 more times the stream it'll be a plus two let's go i could take that i could take that Five thousand units 384 million dollars in property boom that video did make me want to die 3,833 properties, $386 million. Boom! God. I watched that like 10 times. You know what I watched a hundred times was um, the video of that dude putting the elastics on the watermelon. Oh, man. And then... He's like, that's the that's last, the last elastic band I had. And then the watermelon shakes and he goes, <laughs> and then it, ex <laughs> it explodes. And it <laughs> oh, not only does it explode, but it shoots out from his desk like it hits him right in the chest. It knocks him off his computer chair. <laughs> oh, man. What, dude? I haven't laughed in like three days. Okay. <laughs> also, it's just a really funny video. Like, it's not like I'm just laughing at, you know, like... I don't know, I'm trying, you know, oh no, our table, it's broken. Like, that's, sure, it's droll. But, I mean, this this video, is it's got a certain something, man. Are you you're gonna lower my damage? Are you kidding me? It's an insanely good video, dude. It's just, it's got everything. Like, the comedic timing of this is my last rubber band, and then... <laughs> 
The watermelon gives like a warning shot before the real assault. <laughs> and then, you know, it, it also has uh, one thing that I love, which is like at the moment of impact, like the camera gets uh, knocked down. So there's like, uh, it almost has force feedback. The only thing it needs is like if <laughs> as it fired, if they put like a, like a Windows... Uh, error noise or something like that at the same time, then it would be. <laughs> it would. I would. I would never watch anything ever again. You gonna try to go to some World Cup games in Vancouver? Um. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I get. I would. I think it would be cool to go. I would love to. Uh. I would love to. We'll see what the prices are for sure. My mom was savage, dude. She texted me. She knows I'm going through it, right? Like, she knows I'm ill. She texted me yesterday and said, um, Wow, World Cup Games in Vancouver. And I said, Yeah, pretty cool. And then she said, You should Airbnb your place while the World Cup's going on. And I said, Where would I stay? And then she said, You can come here. And then I said, well, then I would spend all the money from the Airbnb on going to visit you. And then she said, yeah, but you'll miss the riots. I was like, well, is this all like a setup for a, a riot punchline at the end of the day? It was just ruthless, man. Then I replied to her, I'm not that worried about riots when Croatia beats South Africa 1-0. She said lull, but I'm sure in her head she's like, there's going to be riots. I think Vancouver's sports rioting days are behind it. Because we didn't riot during the World Juniors when they were here. And like, if there had ever been an occasion to riot, it would have been Team Canada 2019 World Juniors. Because they were fucking ass. And tickets were so expensive. You had to buy the ticket packages like two years in advance. They send you, you, you paid 10 installments. You, you get... Uh, tickets to like certain games, but if you want to make sure that you have access to the finals, you end up getting like, hey, uh, Belarus versus Norway at fucking 2.30 a.m. local time. Doesn't sound like a great time. Anyway, all that, you're like, yeah, but Canada's so good in the World Junior competition, no big deal. Get eliminated by Finland in the damn quarterfinals, no disrespect to the Finns. As a result, we don't uh, even get to play in a bronze medal game. Instead, I'm out there at the gold medal game, sitting in the damn nosebleeds watching Finland versus Team America? Okay, I guess. Anyway, Finland won, so that's the good news. Dude, I, actually, I shouldn't say that that's the, the first time I've laughed in like two days. Because there was also, um, I was laughing so hard at that post that I retweeted. Well, no, I didn't retweet it. I just cropped the meme and then tweeted it myself. <laughs> but that was like... Oh, my three-year-old son has always been obsessed with driving uh, for his entire life. So, on our dead-end road, I let him drive on my lap. Is there any place in the lower mainland where a three-year-old can drive vehicles? What the hell are you talking about, lady? What do you think people are going to reply to the post and be like, Oh yeah, we have like a toddler uh, racetrack in New West. We, yeah, we got a, like a little, uh, just a little demolition derby we set up for the little kids. It was so good. I was, because all this shit I get from, uh, when I, when I put the baby to bed and then I'm waiting for her to fall asleep, I'll go on like r slash shit mom group say, because it's just a reminder that, you know, you could always, you might think that you've screwed up as a parent sometimes, because you're like, oh, maybe I should have given her cookies when she asked for cookies. And then you go on to... <laughs> This uh, subreddit, and you're like, oh my god, these there's people out there doing this. I was I was laughing like to the extent that I thought I was gonna wake our daughter up like five times. There is one that the it's graphic, so don't look it up, okay? Unless you want to see it. But the title of the post was like, she really do be seasoning it though, and. It was like a something called a, a photo of something called a lotus birth, which is <laughs> you give natural birth, and then you know the baby is connected to the placenta. Normally, a doctor or a midwife or a doula or whatever would handle that, um, but instead, in the lotus birth, you kind of wait for it to just decay 
naturally, because you need a hobby, I guess. It's a spiritual thing. Okay, anyway. But then the the title of She Really Do Be Seasoning It, and then the first post was like the baby and the placenta. And I, I once you've had a kid, you're like, you can still see it as like miraculous. You're like, sure, it's a little gross, but at the same time, oh, cute, that's like a newborn baby. But then in the second one, she had like, she was sprinkling like kosher salt. <laughs> And like rosemary on the placenta, <laughs> and she she wrote like <laughs> she wrote like it's a traditional practice to to coat the placenta in like herbs and minerals and stuff like that, so that the nutritional content can pass on to the baby or something like that. <laughs> It just looked like uh, it looked like an episode of like you know Chef's Table or something like that. You know, like at the end of the fifty-minute documentary where they start playing the classical music really fast, and it goes like, and the dishes start coming out in the masterful plating, and then you see the the name of the dish at the bottom. And this one was like you know Lotus Placenta, made by mom. I do have to say it was well seasoned. Like it was <laughs> she had cooking experience. That thing was like coated in salt and pepper. I I this is just I feel bad about, but the R slash shit mom groups say like open my eyes. There's posts, and you never know how many of these are real, obviously. So there's homeschooling, which I, you know, did not do. And I understand the negatives of it, um, potentially. But I've met some homeschooled kids who are, like, I feel like they got the benefits of homeschooling, which is, like, an advanced education in terms of the speed at which they got it. And also, like, socially turned out fine. But apparently there's something called unschooling that I was also not aware of. And, and unschooling, and I'm ignorant to an extent when I say this, but is essentially homeschooling, but you kind of just let your kids do whatever they want. It's like a, like a Montessori school, but instead of a school, it's just kind of like, they're just sort of like living life. And then there was a post that was like, does anyone else is anyone else unschooling their kids and like they're not teaching them math or reading or writing or science? And then the post was just like So I let my kid I let my kids' passions determine where they want to learn. So I'll ask them if they want to read, and they say no. Uh, they just want to watch TV all day. Is this okay? My 13-year-old doesn't even know the alphabet. And I was like, that's not okay. I don't think you need to post on Facebook to figure out if that's okay. I know, it's fake the way I read it, but the way it was... I'm paraphrasing with a lot of judgment attached, but I just love the idea that, like... Well, the, the post started with, like, this insane preamble that was like, does anyone else feel like that when you take away reading, writing, and math, there's not that much value in modern schooling? They, sorry, they called it institutionalized learning, my mistake. If you take away the socialization aspect, the reading, writing, and arithmetic fundamentals that serve as the foundation for a successful and fulfilling adult life, does anyone think there's no value whatsoever in... <laughs> Take away the physical education, uh, knowledge of history and, you know, science and stuff like that. There's not, all the schooling stuff is kind of like a little overrated. Take away audio and video, there's not a whole lot of reason to watch a Twitch stream. You could take away video from this Twitch stream, it would still be okay. I would describe this as punching down, but I think the people that it's punching down to would take it more as an insult if I said that I was punching down than for what I'm actually going to say. So I don't know how to deal with that situation. However, there seem to also be like a lot of posts where, and they're all on Facebook, where a pregnant woman will be like, I'm 37 weeks pregnant. Um, 
My doctor advised me to give birth in a hospital because I have like 20 medical compilation, uh, complications, but I've already had one baby and it went fine. Is there any way I could get like a new doctor who will just do whatever I want them to do? And then the majority of the Facebook comments are always supportive and it's scary. <laughs> I, I saw one that was like describing um, like you're the doctor's client. If you're not happy with what the doctor's recommending, then you should work to find someone whose goals align with yours. And I'm like, hey, you know what? In a lot of situations, I could see that, you know, but maybe not like when you're three weeks away from an incredibly like medically intense and dangerous procedure. I think you maybe get out of the customer mindset a little bit, but or posts that are like, Hey, my, my daughter has a fever of 104 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and she's making six diarrhea diapers a day. But apart from that, she doesn't have any symptoms. Does anyone know what could be the problem? <laughs> You're like, apart from uh, a severe medical grade fever and another symptom, she doesn't have any symptoms. I didn't know you could do that, man. Have, do her eyeballs? Do her eyeballs have a yellow tinge? I'm sorry. I mean, again, this is like, it's, it's a sensitive topic. I'm, what can I say? I'm a changed man. I told you, it's the ship of Theseus, man. I'm, I'm different now. I'm, I'm taking prisoners. Wait, no, I'm, what's worse? People always say taking no prisoners, but I don't know. I think taking prisoners is like a little scarier. Maybe because everybody, when they're going sicko mode, they say they're taking no prisoners. If someone's going sicko mode and they're taking prisoners, I'd be like, damn, dude, fucking just kill me instead, please. Have you seen the one about goat advice? I have not seen the one about goat advice. That one is good. All right, whatever. I'm sick. You can't judge me. The goat advice one's really good. I, dude, honestly, I don't want to spoil it because I'm going to read through those posts again tonight. That's like my, my reading material after I pretend to be asleep so the baby goes to sleep herself. Like, that's, that's more of a spoiler than any television show you could possibly offer to me right now. React, court it. Dude, I... Because it, it really is punching down. Like, it's... At least most of uh, React Court is just relatively normal-seeming people that are like that are like hey uh, i'm like a normal person except i have this one insane social thing that i want to be validated on this is just like it it it, mo it just sucks because like the moms whatever right like they they had their chance <laughs> if you're my age and you're like i want to treat hypothermia with like essential oils whatever you know like as long as you're not my doctor i mean you 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 had you had your chance, okay? It's just this is harder because they have kids, so you you really just feel bad for the kids. But then you start the Ouroboros, right? And you're like, well, probably the moms of the moms has some problems too. And then you're like, it just I mean, at some point, I guess you gotta take some responsibility. But you're like, you just like it's kind of a chain of of this sort of stuff. Leave earn and reroll. I, I I'm sorry. I can't. I just can't. I because if I, I'll die. That's how fragile I am right now. If I reroll on the one room and this run becomes worse than it is right now, I will die on stream of a broken heart. That's okay, you noob. I don't. Not, not okay to me if I die. Yeah. Plus, dying on stream is very against TOS. Probably get, you know what? I bet I get a 24 hour for that. It's just kind of crazy to me. I mean, that's why like the medicine stuff, you really feel bad for the kids. Obviously, it's just a tragic story. But the, uh, that's why in a weird way, the driving one was almost like just quality wholesome entertainment. I'm not saying the kid was not at risk because obviously you should not have your three year old Driving a car. Take one of these real quick. Especially, like, uh, an inch away from the airbag. You know. I mean, at least it's not as tragic as, like, my kid is sick, but I don't believe in Tylenol. 
I did you, there was another was so, I'm sorry I keep going into this, but there was another one that was like this medication is so much better than Tylenol. Plus, it's not made by big pharma, so they're not preying on your demise. And it's even cheaper than Tylenol. Go check it out. And it was a photo of uh, acetaminophen. It was just like a, a no-name brand acetaminophen. I was like, come on, man. You gotta... We gotta do better than this. They're kind of not wrong. What do you think? It's the same thing! It's like they're they're chirally identical. You got food poisoning? Me too. Wait, you know what? Okay, Chad. Anybody here get food poisoning and live um, in the lower mainland in the last week? Maybe we could uh, like contagion this shit. No, 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 no. OMG me. I don't believe you. I think it's just me. Wait a minute. What's a restaurant? A restaurant in Vancouver that only I eat at. Tick, 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 tick. One weekly customer. Tick, 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 tick. Thus, there's no outbreak uh, reported. Tick, 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 tick. It's fucking Subway, dude. No! A restaurant with only one weekly diner. Uh, it's not possible. Not because I don't want it to be possible, but legitimately because I only had Subway after the food poisoning symptoms abated. I haven't eaten Subway in a while before the food poisoning. Maybe Subway gave you double food poisoning in this economy? No, I didn't eat any Jif peanut butter. Um, I did see that recall, too. Honestly, I, I, this thing is so hard to trace, right? So I understand why people go like, oh, it was definitely the Taco Bell. Because it's just, it's, you know, we want to, we're, we're pattern solving animals. But uh, I, I really can't come up with a, an origin point for the illness. I definitely think, it, and this is, this takes maturity. If I had to guess, I think it's, I, I was cleaning the cat litter, didn't wash my hands sufficiently, touched my face, put my pants, had sex, something like that, Morbius style. My second and like roughly equivalent guess, during food preparation, was preparing the food, didn't wash my hands adequately, licked my fingers, pulled my pants. Something like that. You know? I, I would say both... I'm not blaming any restaurants. My guess is that it probably is, uh, is a result of me, to be honest. Rather than the result of a, a, a restaurant. That, but it could have been a restaurant, but I would guess it's probably me. Shouldn't have drank the hot dog water straight from the bag. You guys don't do... When you... Uh, when you open a plastic package of chicken thighs, you don't squeeze the juice into your mouth? Wow, must be nice to be part of the 1%. Let all that chicken juice go to waste. Is that bad? You're not supposed to, you're not supposed to do that. That's free flavor. That's where all the flavor is, man. In all the antibiotics that got excreted out over the uh, absolute drubbing that it got over the transport chain en route from Kentucky to Vancouver. <laughs> One time my dad had food poisoning. For like a month, and the only thing he could eat was this box of granola bars he had at his desk at work. He would force one down every day just to eat something. Turns out those had a recall and were giving it to him. Holy cow. I do want to say your dad is a legend because I was... So what... If you didn't see the last session we did here, my current hypothesis is that I basically got a cold and then got followed up with food poisoning. I thought a couple of times over the past three days or so that if I got food poisoning again, like a different foodborne illness, it might kill me. So your dad having a month straight of food poisoning and not being killed by it is kind of incredible. <laughs> Someone said when you're on the chubby emu video, how do you want to be credited, NL or RL? And I was like, who the heck is Chubby Emu? And then I Googled it. A boy put on a pair of socks. This is what happened to his dot, dot, dot. A woman ate a suspicious burger for dinner. This is what happened to her dot, dot, dot. A boy rubbed one tube pain relief cream between his legs. This is what happened to his dot, dot, dot. Oh, man. There's an extra layer of difficulty when you also have a toddler. Because... Like, your kid just does not care. <laughs> At all. <laughs>
Like I, I watched, uh, I watched our daughter for actually like several hours yesterday because I wanted to feel helpful. And I was like, you know, sitting on the couch, drinking some water, trying to, you know, munch on some bananas. And then she's like, I'm gonna like, um, try to plug this USB charger into this power outlet, like the wrong way. Like I'm gonna put the USB into the outlet. And I'm like, mm, don't do that. And then she's like, I'm gonna do it. And then I gotta stand up urgently and be like, no. And then she's like, okay, okay, I'm not gonna do that anymore. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna um, try to scale the high chair like King Kong. And you're like, I wish you wouldn't. And then you're like, she's like, I'm gonna. Anyway, you get the idea. Genius baby. She's, she knows how to troll. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. How did cavemen live through the norovirus when they got it uh, back in the day? It doesn't make any sense to me. They didn't? You think so? You th I guess they could have died just due to dehydration. But I was like, if I was like part of a, a tribe or something like that, and then uh, like I got norovirus and we had to move, they would have left my ass behind. Because I, I couldn't have made it. It wouldn't have been like from lack of will. It would have been like, you know, I just couldn't have made it. They, then they, unless I was like the damn leader, even if I was the leader, they would probably be like, we can't afford to waste this much time waiting for this jabroni to get better. But then I'm also like, maybe cavemen had it like a lot easier. Like maybe they didn't get that sick because they lived in smaller groups, right? Like that's an interesting anthropological question. Were infectious diseases, I'm not talking about like the medieval era, I'm talking about like, you know, 10,000 years ago, were infectious diseases Maybe even like 50,000 years ago. Were infectious diseases like um, way less common? This is something I don't necessarily think I could get an answer uh, for from chat. <laughs> this ain't Google? Well, you know, I'm just speaking hypothetically or whatever. Yeah, I know agriculture, the domestication of animals caused uh, some increase in infectious disease spread. Then also, I mean, you got to think like, you know, stuff like the chicken pox. It's not like when you knew everybody in your tribe, it's not like randomly one day someone would be like, what the fuck, I'm itchy, right? Like you'd have to, you'd have to be introduced to somebody who had, who had it that you had never seen before. Or you could be the first person ever infected, I suppose. But, but like, <laughs> I guess what I'm asking is like, so cavemen... Obviously, they ate a lot of nuts, and they ate a lot of vegetables, and a lot of fruits, okay? I've said many times, how, how awesome would it be to be like a caveman on like the island where the dominant staple crop is watermelons, versus like a caveman on an island where the dominant staple crop is durians? Man, oh man, I would have drafted the... If I get first pick, put me on the... I don't want to be on the... Cassava Islands? I still want Nose Goblin. Put me on the damn Watermelon Island for sure. Anyway, but that being said, obviously when they could, they also ate meat. But when they ate meat, I mean, this is a question I don't know if it can even be answered at all. When they ate meat before the advent of readily reproducible fire, did they eat raw meat if so was there foodborne illness from the raw meat or were viruses and bacteria like we don't even know humans exist yet so we're not going to infect them or whatever <laughs> that's not exactly scientifically apt but you know maybe for a while the viruses were like we don't even know that this is a possible vector for infection so just chill we'll get them later dude we'll do chill we'll get them later probably a lot of parasites I believe that. I mean, when you think about it, like, I mean, I guess that's why <laughs> it's not funny. I, I, come on, it was. Uh, we're talking about abstracted individuals a hundred thousand years ago. Cavemen must have been fucked up like all the time. They, they, they must have been infected by everything. Never like had a what we would consider to be like a nutritionally complete day. Sleep was probably messed up. Stress levels through the damn roof because you're actually being like, you know, preyed upon as well. Just your very existence is in question every single day. No Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> you
You think they had a more fulfilling life? I don't know, that's one of those million dollar questions, right? I don't think they had time to worry about higher order questions like the fulfilling uh, fulfillment quality of a life. But in its own way, you know, maybe that feels like you uh, that feels like a fulfilling life, you know? To have always had a purpose, that purpose just being survival. Yeah, I would say like it's pretty fulfilling to not be eaten by a tiger. That probably hits like I would say it probably hits better than writing a novel that ends up on like the New York Times bestseller list. I'm not talking something easy like nonfiction, where you can just go on a bunch of podcasts. I'm talking about like a fiction book, like something that people do not want to buy. That's not an oof. It's just stating the reality of the world's tastes for print media these days, man. I guess that can, that can still be an oof, I suppose, now that I think about it. I don't know, the Bible still sells pretty well. hi yo! Does it though? Because they, they're giving it away like for free, right? Like just on the street. I've, I've seen a new, I don't know if anybody else has seen this in Vancouver. I've seen a new crop of street canvassers. Um, and I, I have never stopped because I'm not naive, but they have no, I need to build you a story here, okay? They have no signage at all. They had so normally when you're walking, you'll see like a big, uh, like a placard that has like a crab nebula on it or something, and then says like, "Do you feel satisfied?" And then that frames a bookshelf that has a bunch of books and pamphlets, and then there's two six foot four, uh, fifty five year old men in like a sweater with a, a button-up shirt and a tie with the sweaters over top and then it's tucked into like gray slacks and you're like those are scientologists a hundred percent there's no you could spot it a mile away when you walk by they go uh, and you go eh, and there's not you don't have to be impolite about it but you just move on but there's a new one that i've seen and it's been like a, a month of this it's really young, like vibrant canvassers. No charity branding or anything like that. They don't. They don't have a, like a product or anything. They just sort of have like a table, and they they're at the like very high foot traffic areas. They're kind of dancing. They're going, and then when they see you, they go, "Oh my God, I love your shoes!" And then the first, I hate to say it, but I've lived in a city for a while. My response to "Hey, I love your shoes" is always, "Sorry, I'm not interested." And to their credit, they don't push, because I don't think the push ever works anyway, but they just go, okay, and then they keep dancing and they're like on to the next target. But I do have to say, I'm very curious about, and maybe this is what they're trading on in a marketing term, so to speak, but like, I'm very curious about what they're pushing because of the fact that it, they've mixed it up a little bit. They're not doing the traditional, like, you know, annoy you technique. I gotta, I gotta, well, I'm never gonna stop. Cause obviously like if it's something that good, they wouldn't have to sell it on the street like that. But, but I would like to know what it is. Cause they got a different tact. And I see them stopping people all the time. Like people are, it's, it's kind, it's, I wouldn't say it's working like 50% of the time, but I would definitely say it's, it's got people stopping much more than they stop for like, Hey, I love your shoes. By the way, like you want to donate a hundred dollars a month to this charity? They, they're revolutionizing the, the canvassing game. Talk to them for the anecdote. No, I don't want to talk to them. I just want to know. <laughs> Just want to know, please. Is it better to hard turn down a solicitor or treat them like a human being and then turn them down? You should, I mean, you should, you should just know, right? I guess I, I put the card in front of the horse here. You should know you're being sold to just by the way an interaction starts. Like, did they come to your door and they're a stranger and they start with like, hi, how are you? If you come to my door, and the first question you ask is, how are you? You don't want the honest answer, because the honest answer is that I was great until about 30 seconds ago. And now I'm wondering why there's a stranger at my door who wants to talk to me. So like in that situation, as soon if, if I said hi, and then you said, how are you? My next question or my next uh, 
statement would be, sorry, I'm not interested, because obviously this is like a sales pitch. So I think in that situation, you just, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Have you ever bought something like door to door? I never would. Because it has to be ass. I would say if, if a child came to my door and was like, here's Girl Scout cookies or, you know, chocolates for my school charity or something like that, yes. If an adult came to my door trying to sell something, there's a 0% chance. So I'm not going to waste both of our time. I sell door to door. It honestly isn't too hard. I, I don't know, man. I feel like it might be like a demographic thing. I can't imagine anybody my age ever buying anything door to door. It seems unfathomable to me. I, yeah, I don't even want to answer my door. I, 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 this is another episode of... Um, shit my mom says. I hope nobody's taken this idea. And I love my mom, but I just, the, the texts we have are funny, because like Ed Sheeran's song on Sesame Street, sometimes we live in two different worlds, okay? That's a little bit of a deep cut for you. But, uh, so one time, there was a knock on my door at like 7.30 a.m. And I went down to see uh, what was going on, and it was uh, an officer of the law. So I opened the door, and uh, I was like, hello? And he said, good morning, we're here because, like, there was a break-in nearby and we were wondering, like, if you had seen anything or if you had heard anything in the night. And I was like, oh, no, sorry. Um, and he said, okay, have a good day. Um, he didn't need to know. I saw every second of that shit go down. <laughs> I, saw, I saw their face, I got their name. I saw what they stole, and I'm just joking. Anyway, um, so I told my mom, I was like, oh, I'm a little tired because I, like, I got woken up because a cop knocked on our door this morning. And she said, Ryan, never open the door for someone in a police officer's uniform because that could just be... I know you're like, base mom, base mom, but wait. Never open the door for someone in a police officer's uniform because that could just be someone pretending to be a police officer and then they will kill you <laughs> which i know is a thing that could happen but also they could just not dress as a police officer and kill you is the uh, they'd like i would have opened the well i guess it's 7 30 a.m i wouldn't have opened the door for just anybody but if they just knocked at like 2 p.m., I would at least open the door and then they could be like, bang, you know? But I guess if you specifically wanted to murder people in the sunrise hour, maybe it's a special technique. But yeah, I don't want to open my door. Like, I don't want to... <laughs> Every form of interaction with strangers is compromised. Can't use voicemail, voicemail anymore. 99% spam calls. 1% some lady in Vancouver who thinks she has my phone number and keeps giving my phone number to like doctor's offices and stuff like that, which I imagine has probably screwed up her life pretty bad, but like I got my own shit going on, sorry to say. Email, sure, yeah, but it's still like very high spam coefficients or if not, like spam is one thing. Obviously like spam is bad. Even more annoying than spam these days is just like the endless marketing materials from businesses that you went to like one to two times in your life. I know you can unsubscribe, but I'm just saying it's annoying. How are you still getting this lady's calls? Bro, I'm telling you, she sucks. <laughs> She's like ass at handling appointments and stuff, dude. She's horrible. Door to door is the worst. Like, as far as I'm concerned, it, I would really only open my door to be arrested, I think. If, if maybe I ordered a pizza, but the pizza didn't have the ability to do, like, prepay online so they could just leave it at the door, I'm really, there's only one reason to open the door, and I think that's to be arrested and then go to prison. For a stranger, at least. All the forms of communication are bad. But definitely, there's never been a situation on the, like, on the street where I've been stopped by a stranger and been like, oh, I'm really glad that happened. I would, and I swear to you, this story is true. I've, I, I wouldn't say I feared for my life, but on my very cursed walk with the baby on Tuesday, where it felt like I was walking through molasses, um... There was a guy, and it's just what you, you ever see people, you know in Diablo 2, there's like champion enemies. That's like, oh, it's the same as a normal enemy, but they got like a special, uh, like lightning damage or something like that. And thus they get a name. So instead of just being like uh, a grunt, they're like, my name is Pig Thor the Blasted or something like that. 
I saw a champion enemy IRL in IRL space, and he was like 6'5", completely bald, uh, and was wearing a bucket hat. Like, he looked like he came straight out of the Len Steal My Sunshine music video. And he was walking in the same direction that I was, and I was not scared. But he was walking with like uh, like some rhythm, right? It wasn't like a, a walk just for utility. Like he was getting some sauce out of it and he was walking with a young lady. Um, then he turned around and he started walking towards me while I was walking towards him. And I was like, oh no, something's gonna, I, my like acetylcholine started to spike a little bit, right? Luckily, he stopped at someone that was like two people in front of me. And I heard him say, Hey man, settle a bet for me and my wife. Do you lean right or lean left? And then the guy said, uh, I guess I'm more of uh, in the center. And then he turned to his wife and he shouted, you were right. And then like jogged back up to her. And then it was just like, I, it was an interaction I was very thankful to have avoided. Just a very strange question to to have to deal with, I guess. Weirdly wholesome. Is it wholesome, though? Because I felt like if he said, I lean left, he might have been punched in the face by this champion enemy. Or if he said, I lean right, maybe he would have been punched in the face. But I was kind of getting the vibe that, like, there was a wrong answer to the question. Also, I don't know if it's like, um... Maybe it's like tourist energy or something. It's like a tourist will come to your city, go on a walk, and be like, Oh yeah, I know everything about like the way people in Vancouver feel about politics. Because I, I talked to one person on the street, and uh, they said they lean to the center. So I was like, bro, you're not getting the representative sample of what <clears throat> Vancouver is like. We're out for a nature walk. It's like 3 p.m. on a... On a Tuesday, dude. Normal people are at work right now. You were talking politics? No, man, I was just, I was playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> I completely thought it was a question about his penis. You guys are sick, dude. I too thought it was a penis question. I think it was about su something much more private and intimate. Someone's political beliefs. Which would you answer? I, you're gonna think I'm putting some sauce on it. Anytime anyone talks to me about anything on the street, I simply say, sorry, not interested. I, even before they can complete their sentence. And it has cost me zero opportunities in my life. Up to, except, because you get the vibe, people come up to you and they say, excuse me, are you Northern Lion? And I'm like, okay, that, sorry, not interested. Most of the time, I don't even let them finish their sentence, please. Nobody is out on the, the, the sidewalk being like, we're giving away a million dollars, a million dollars to the nicest person. Nice, hey, great shoes, great shoes. Here's a million dollars. It's always like, you know, whoa, I really like your shoes. By the way, would you like to buy some like bullshit? Someone asked for directions, you just shoes them away. Okay, well, to be fair, I did, a, an older woman said, excuse me, do you live around here? Which again, not you could tell she's a boomer because there's a question that no millennial or zoomer would ever lead with because it's fucking crazy. Um, but I said, uh, you know, I'm familiar with the area. And then she said, are there any restaurants here? And I said, oh yeah, there's like a pizza place and a donair shop down this way. And then she walked in the other direction. But like, so the, occasionally I will answer some questions in public, but you get the vibe you're being solicited to. For sure. Otherwise, if if somebody that was like, uh, uh, this is a little rude, but it's also a little bit in the real world. If uh, like somebody that was my age came up to me and was like, excuse me, like, do you know where this place is? I would probably just say no, sorry. Because in my head, my the question I want to ask is, where's your phone? I would be, a, I'd just be a little concerned I'm not saying, oh, you can't talk to me unless you own a smartphone. I'm just like, they're so ubiquitous that I feel like you've led with a question that's like, hey, are, do you self-identify as a nice person? And then when I say, yes, I'm a nice person, they go, okay, now here's the real routine that we're running here, which is give me all your money. This is a stick up. Oh yeah, do every nice thing ever. Anyway, why are you so distrustful of your fellow man? 
Let me guess. It's one of those things. You live in a town with 10,000 people. Everybody knows everybody. July 4th, you go to the church picnic. There's a, a, a pig roast and fireworks. You know the name of the person who mans the barrel that the pig is roasting in. Their parents knew your parents when they went to high school together. You all had kids within like uh, six months of each other. It's a goodwill hunting situation. Every, it's like Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family, okay? I don't live in the biggest city in the world. I live in a city that's big enough that like, when a stranger talks to you, you're like, this can't mean something that's good for me overall. I think, you know, there, there's been times, I, like in my hometown, sometimes, there, you'll just like, get a free sample on the street. You'll just walk by a business and someone will be like, excuse me, and you're like, yeah? And they're like, Here's like a, a little pita bread. And you're like, wow, that's awesome. In Vancouver, people will just like shout at you. You'll just be like walking around and you'll hear, hey! And if you even give them like a, like that's enough that, I'm not gonna say it's on, but you've at least acknowledged like that you heard them. You just gotta be like off in your own Emily in Paris situation in your head. Just like a wild winged dove. Sing the song now, stand up, sing it. Am I clairvoyant or have you referenced Emily in Paris before? Um, I think Chib referenced Emily in Paris once and I've stolen that joke a little bit. Because anytime I see like uh, a 25 year old woman in public who's girl bossing and walking, uh, she's driving a car to go with AirPods in and uh, hitting the bumper of the car behind her when she's trying to parallel park. I'm like, don't bother her. She's having she's having an Emily in Paris moment right now. She's she's experiencing what life is like in the big city as a young independent woman. She's got some kombucha. You can see she's got a Lee's Donuts t-shirt on. Like she's experiencing what urban life is like right now. Oh, uh, you know what I was gonna respond to? It, did, of all the things that I've been uh, goaded into, let's say, in, in my entire streaming career, Playing Atrioc in balloons has got to be the funniest. Who is going into this man's chat and saying that I am good at balloons? I've literally played almost zero balloons in my entire life. In fact, one of the only times... I'm going to give you some, some insider knowledge, okay? This is like behind the music. At Champions of Fire 1, there were like five or six games. Pac-Man 256, Crossy Road, uh, uh, Disney Crossy Road, I should say. Eight Ball Pool a balloons tower defense game and fruit ninja <laughs> it was a very it was a very serious event my best games pac-man 256 and disney crossy road but my eight ball pool game was cracked unfortunately uh the servers went down on the day that uh, the event actually took place and they're not gonna postpone the whole event that they've got a production crew in. They rented out like a theater in the Paris Resort in Las Vegas. So they just scrapped eight ball pool from the, the docket, which meant that I was guaranteed to play Cobalt, who is a, a master at balloons in balloons. I hadn't even played the tutorial in the game up to that point, which was not good game theory on my part, to be honest. But I basically was like, my, my wager was that, hey, I'll just focus on like four of these games. Because all you have to do is, um, you know, you've got to win like a best of five. So as long as I'm, I can afford to have like one weak game. And that's no big deal. I mean, Fruit Ninja was also not my strong suit, but anyway. I have no Bloons experience. In fact, the only time I've ever even played Bloons was uh, in an eSports event where I got beaten so badly, I never even made it to the, the television broadcast of it, except I was part of Cobalt Streak's uh, narrative, like, montage of how he made it to the semifinals. My entire legacy in that event was distilled down to like 15 seconds of me getting my ass kicked. So it's it's not like that it would even be a con. It's, it's like I have no chance. But it did kind of make me want to play some balloons. People people like balloons. I don't know. I do I do think because my balloons experience is zero, it would be funny for like five seconds, and then people would be like, oh no, he's not pretending. He's like really ass. We watched you play Rogue Tower. 
Yeah, that's the other thing, is that, like, it's not like I have transferable skills from other tower defense games. Like, I'm, I'm, tower defense, that sort of thing hasn't been my bag, baby. Best game I've ever played in tower defense, original Monday Night Combat, probably, honestly, I, I don't remember the leaderboards, but I probably have to say I was probably one of the top 10 Canadian engineers in that game, personally. It's not a tower defense. Um, it's got towers. It has a, it has a certain tower defense element to it. I honestly think that, I hate to say this, Josh, I don't think we were ever good at video games, if I'm being honest. Here's the thing. I think we were better at video games when we were younger, but I also, I've come up with a new hypothesis. Because we played most of our multiplayer games in the um, infancy of the internet, transmission of information and strategy was like the lowest it would ever be ever again. So people would just play the game for hundreds of hours and just be bad. And they would just be like, I don't care if I'm bad, I'm having fun. Nowadays, people are like, fuck that. <laughs> They're, they, before they've even played a game, they've watched 75 hours of YouTube tutorials. They've filled out 20 character builders online. They watched the... Ubisoft Rainbow Six Siege World Championship. You're gonna t take Tachanka on this map? Are you crazy? Back in the day, people would just be like, oh, I don't know, I just used the plasma rifle because I kind of like the way it sounds. Those were the days. It was a great time to be like 16. It was free wins. Take me back. Yeah, now everyone is like a... Well, I, I, it sounds insulting because I was gonna say everybody's like a wannabe pro, but like, it's more like, you know they're better than me, then I wish that that were not the case. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know where to go with this comment. You're only 32, when did you go bald? Okay, so first off, you've insulted me by saying I look older than I am. But you know what? There's a lot of 12 year olds in chat, I can take that. Secondly, the year is 2022. 2022 minus 1988. How'd you get 32 out of that? I just gotta know. You weren't no schooled, were you? Because we were talking about that earlier. I don't want to punch down. Sorry, unschooled, unschooled, not no schooled. NL, did you know the Phantom Menace was released closer to today than A New Hope was released to a Phantom Menace? Yeah, that makes sense to me. That makes sense. That doesn't seem like the, I know that this is bad chest, and it's like one of the most common TILs of all time. But I think it's actually really interesting to think about the fact that we live closer to Cleopatra than Cleopatra lived to the building of the pyramids of Egypt. Because that actually is like a, it, it's an interesting thing that allows you to conceptualize like, wow, holy cow, the Egyptian empire lasted a long freaking time. Because I think of like Cleopatra's here, and I'm over here, I think the pyramids are like right there. But they're further back, that's crazy. They changed that last year, we passed the threshold. What the hell? All right, well, never mind that. But still, we're almost, we're equidistant from Cleopatra as Cleopatra was from the pyramids. But like when people do the thing that's like, you know, did you know old movie that you thought was old when you were 10? is actually newer when you were 10 than old movie you thought was that just came out last year like i'm you, you the rest of your life is just gonna be it's just that over and over hey phoenix fails what on earth does that sentence mean okay i don't really know <laughs> but like when you're young your perception of old things is like anything that happened like oh five years before you were born is old then when you get older your perception of time changes so i mean if you were born in 2000 you probably think jurassic park is like old as shit, right well what if i told you that uh jurassic world is as old to you now as jurassic Wor park I i'm the same age now i don't know how to construct this one okay listen have you ever had a dream that you want you Anyway, long story short, one day you're gonna be like, what the fuck? 20th anniversary edition for Top Gun Maverick? I didn't even know that that shit came out yet. That's, that's what I promise you, okay? 
you're gonna be like, when did they make three sequels to Pitch Perfect? The first one just came out last year. And how does Melissa McCarthy have so many Netflix movies? Do people watch them? How does it happen? I mean, I like Bridesmaids. And I like, um... The one where she pretends to... She, she forges the signatures of the authors of rare books or, or poems or something. Or she forges the letters. That I thought I thought that movie was great, but like every other comedy she is like the lead actress in. Who who's watching it? Who's watching these man? Can you ever forgive me? That's a great exactly. That's a fantastic movie. The heat was fun. It was, but now are you ready to like and, and spy? Sure, but are you ready to to make me make you feel as old as you make me feel? I'm pretty sure Spy came out in fucking, like, 2013 or something like that. That's 10 years old, basically. The Heat was 2014, I think. That's almost 10 years old. Did you know Canada and Finland are only separated by one country? Yeah, Canada's got a lot of, um... Well, we got a lot of countries we share a maritime border with. I don't know if you knew this, but we're neighbors to Japan. It's kind of like, they live, like, pretty far away, but we're right there we're next door really any country that borders the pacific ocean <laughs> is, or the atlantic ocean uh, or the arctic ocean we also have a land border with denmark now did you i know vip daniel you probably saw this news there had been a, a an island in the arctic that canada and and denmark have been sort of like semi-humorously posturing over for for a couple of decades and then they agreed to just split it in half so now congratulations to my my danish brothers in chat we've finally been unified on the international stage feels good like there's people out there who think they're gonna like consistently beat DraftKings. do you think it's because like their first like five bets um went right that's that's something that messes with me sometimes because I, I think about that, uh, like, how do, how do you come to be, like, the adult that you are today, right? It all, I mean, there's a lot of things, uh, that little forks in the road along the way, don't get me wrong. But, like, I think the, the cynical, verbose, grumpy, 72-year-old in a 24-year-old's body that you see in front of you today, basically... It starts with my mom teaching me how to read at an early age. I learn how to read at an early age. I love reading. I go to school, crushing it early academically defines my personality. Because of the fact that I'm doing well in school, that becomes part of my identity. That chooses like where I place my priorities as I get a little older and a little older and a little older. And then I, that affects me socially throughout high school and changes the interests that are going to happen. And then all of a sudden you got me here yelling about people in the grocery store line. Sighs loudly when he doesn't get called upon by his teacher. So true. So true. So like these perceptions of of yourself and like what your identity are they can be formed by things that to some extent are kind of out of your control now i'm not complaining i'm merely observing basically what i'm asking is do you want to know how i got these like what if i went to school and on like that first couple of years of school i was not good at reading and as a result did not enjoy it maybe i'd be maybe i'd be harry styles right now you ever consider that in many ways, I blame reading for this lopsided screwball trajectory my life's been on ever since. More like Baldy Styles. Okay, good one. Good one. It's plus two. It's a plus two for you. Look at what reading does to a man. Mom! Mom, why'd you make me read so much? It set me up for a life of deriving a certain proportion of my self-worth from academic success, Mom! Maybe these, uh, these unschoolers are onto something, man. I will say, though, learning about the concept of unschooling, where you kind of semi-literally just let your kids do whatever they want, made me finally understand what a Montessori school is. Because I had thought that a Montessori school was letting your kids do whatever they want. Now I realize that's unschooling, and a Montessori school is more like 
You can. We got like six things, and you can choose which one of them you want to do. Which makes a lot more sense to me than letting your three-year-old kid drive a car, because he's because he's always been obsessed with cars. Never mind, by the way. I, I'm starting to see the folly in my ways. Hello. Is that my baby? Is that my baby? Sea lion. Whoa, sea lion. Oh, honey. It was like so cute. He was like, no, 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 whole You were scared of the sea lion? Yeah. And then the sea lion's like, and every time sea lions came closer to us, she was like, no. And then we weren't even like close to. And the sea lions, when they like splashed water, and then it splashed the dead that was right next to us, but like it was just like almost like. Piercing. Yeah. It, it, it didn't hit us at all. And then they freaked out and she was so sorry. And then she was like, Way! Go, 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 go. That's daddy's. Do you want to take this and put it in the recycling? Thank you. Wow, look at that. How are you feeling? Good. I, I haven't even had a bathroom break. Thank you. Oh. Oh, well, oh, do you want, okay, check this out, ready? Pinwheel. Wow. He's not a smoker. Daddy Sid. Daddy Sid? No, 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 no. You should go sit with mommy and have some lunch. That's daddy's dice. It's one of the many choking hazards that Daddy takes from you, distracts you with an episode of Peppa Pig, and then hides it somewhere where you can't access it. Thank you. Gave me my phone back. Thank you. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, that otter. And then we went in. And then she was just hugging it for like 10 minutes. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, honey. Fluffy. Fluffy? Oh, the yoga mat is like soft compared to the wood. Oh, I guess that's true. Saul Goodman defending Morbius? Your Honor, in my client's defense, he did say it's Morbin time before he morphed. How can it? Well, no, no, no. We got to do it the opposite way. How could we consider this to be first degree morbing? First degree morbing requires intent. And what's my client's most famous catchphrase? It's morbing time. Now, Miss Jennifer Garner, did you hear my client, Dr. Michael Morbius, say it's morbing time? No? Then I posit to the court, this could not be first order morbing. It's second, maybe morb slaughter. Even the baby liked that one. Bob Odenkirk kind of goes crazy, huh? Does he say it's morbing time in the movie? We have a, a two-year spoiler window here. I've seen some clips that seem to indicate that, oh, he says it. <laughs> and the audience goes crazy it and it happens during his fight with venom i but i don't know if it's venom because all i know is is the someone in the symbiote suit dude what if morbius puts on the venom suit holy cow okay maybe this is too far i don't want to give sony any ideas i'm still waiting for uh spider-man but he wears roller skates or what, what was it in the, in the Sony Pictures email leaks is like, um, kids these days love skateboarding. What if, what if we put uh, Peter Parker on a skateboard in the new Spider-Man movie? So good. Well, I've said my piece on, like, if... Well, because I thought that... Look, I'm going to reiterate some of Monday and Tuesday's memes, because it's possible, you know, it, it's been... That's ancient history now, right? Um, but 
When they brought Morbius back to theaters by memeing it into existence, I saw a lot of hand-wringing on social media like, Oh, look what you made them do. Wow, are you happy now? And I was like, yeah. Because, like, it's a huge company wasting their money. It's hilarious. It's like the funniest thing of all time. Why would I care that Sony is wasting their money redistributing Morbius? Like, it's just... I mean, honestly, if you're that stupid that you think that this is how you're going to capture the zeitgeist, you should give the money to other people. Because you don't deserve it. If they greenlight a Morbius 2 because of the memes, my personal prediction, and this doesn't mean that it would necessarily come true, but my personal prediction would be that they would lean hard into the self-awareness and in doing so create a movie that's actually even worse than Morbius 1 but for all the wrong reasons. And that would be hilarious too, because it would also cost a lot of money, and then my expectation is it would make almost nothing, much like the original Morbius did. So, I think that would also be hilarious. Wouldn't bother me at all. Like the whole point, I don't, I don't know if people necessarily lost this somewhere along the way. The point of the Morbius memes is that nobody cares about the movie at all. So it's funny to suggest that it's going to be the most successful and critically acclaimed movie of all time. So if, if Sony doesn't under... They only see the tweets and the frequency of them and they don't understand that the reasoning behind them is because your movie is so bad um, and so uninteresting that nobody wants to see it, and then they end up spending like, you know, 40 million dollars. I don't know how much Jared Leto's call rate is these days, but... Or any days for that matter. Um, since he was Jordan Catalano on My So-Called Life. But if they want to spend the money on that, then, I mean, by all means. It made 50 grand at the box office. Oh, hey, come on. It made 50 grand at the box office when it re-released. Which is truly horrible, don't get me wrong. But... It must, if, I, I haven't looked it up. If I had to guess how much Morbius made when it came out to theaters, I bet it made, I bet it made $35 million. Which is very low. Can I, can I get some box office mojo check? Okay, it made 50 more billion. Sure, okay, it made 50 more billion dollars. It made 100, okay, 163 million worldwide. What's the domestic? 40 million, 74 million domestic? What? You? What do you mean, look what you made them do? You think spreading the memes is gonna lead to a sequel? You almost took that thing to 100 mil. That's not that much money, but it's for a movie, but it's certainly, like, more than Morbius should have made. What the hell's wrong with you? $270 for theater average in the US. Oh, man. I mean, $164 million worldwide? It's not good, but, like, for a a kind of Marvel adjacent movie I suppose but that's not it I thought it was an insane flop like I thought I guess that's what a superhero flop looks like in 2022 but how many people watched it at IMAX dude did any movies have like the promotional cups and stuff like that or do any theaters have like promotional cups Dr. Michael Morbius promotional 72 ounce theater soda cup Kind of crazy. I do, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't say I have sympathy for those involved in its production. But it does have to be kind of a hard pill to swallow. That, like, this thing that you worked on probably for, like, two years and were really excited about, when the marketing material came out, everyone immediately spotted that this was going to be, like, a piece of complete dog shit and just started making fun of it relentlessly. And then the jokes were so obviously more entertaining than the thing that you worked on yourself that it ke ironically kept it going. Like, it's just an endless... Uh, an endless content water wheel, right? On the other hand, it is very funny. Did you know Star Wars <laughs> was originally supposed to be called Blue Harvest? I gotta be honest. Whoever made um, George Lucas change the title of the film from Blue Harvest to Star Wars, probably, I mean, he should give him like a more billion dollars. Because he probably made him like four more billion dollars. Hey, are you guys going to go see Blue Harvest Episode 6, Return of the Jedi?
Star Wars is in such a weird place right now. I did see, it seemed like Disney is doing the thing that they should have done. Instead of going with J.J. Abrams to reboot the franchise, now, or the entire brand, I guess, they're now going with, with Taika Waititi, right? That's smart. And then they, I saw that he gave an interview or something where he was like, I'm not going to touch any story with characters that you've already heard of in the Star Wars universe. And I was like, okay, just let him, like, work. Just give him, like, eight years and we'll probably be like, wow, Star Wars is in a good place. There will be quips, but the quips will actually be funny because it's Taika Waititi and, like, he's probably not gonna make, like, some hardcore Star Wars where, like, you know, Darth Icky gets his, the head of his penis cut off by, like, a lightsaber or something like that. But if you want that, you're gonna need, like, Takeshi Miike to make a Star Wars movie or something. It's not gonna happen. I did see all the, the hand-wringing over the failing of, uh, or the relative failing, I guess, of, uh, Disney's Star Wars Resort, Galaxy's Edge. And uh, I have to say, as somebody who, with my wife, I watched a, uh, a Galaxy's Edge vlog from a, a Disney Parks YouTuber. The number one thing that struck me is that it's a themed resort hotel about Star Wars and 90% of the people who were there were men in their 40s. I, I, you gotta have a little bit of like a... You gotta price something to be family friendly for something like that to pop, right? I mean, of course. Yeah, but like, you know... They're a dying breed. I don't mean literally, I just mean like, you know, I don't think you're, if, if you're 45 years old, you're not gonna go to Galaxy's Edge like, you know, twice a year. You gotta have something for kids, man. It's the kids who wanna go on a three day excursion where they can pretend to be immersed in Star Wars the whole time. I, it's just, I'm not a, a businessman, I'm just making my two cents, but seems like at some point you might wanna have something that lets you get the families involved. I would love to heal, by the way. It's for sure Disney adults going. Yeah, but they, they're not going, though, because it's, it's like a failure. Or at least that's what, what I saw indicates that it is... The article, maybe it was clickbaiting me a little bit, but it seemed to frame it like it's, it's not doing well. Adults are the ones paying for it? You see a kid in public at a movie theater? Are you like, how the fuck did this kid pay for it? It's the parents. Dude, you see a kid at a restaurant, you're like, oh, d that kid's eating a, a pirate pack at White Spot? Where did he get the 1450? It's not separate checks, Poindexter. Someone's pay. of course, you, parents are paying for it. What the hell are you talking about? I was also laughing, because I, I, I will say that when I watch the footage from Galaxy's Edge, there's like parts of the experience actually look really cool. They look like a Star Wars themed escape room where like you and your uh, the people who are like on the same cohort as you are like you get drafted as engineers and you have to like go to a fake like engineering room and they give you like signals and you got to do things that match the signals and like turn some keys and push some buttons. And I'm like, that's a cool activity. And then you look up how much it costs and you're like three nights, $5,000. I think I'll just play Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. I mean, that's just... that's insanity. Don't bad chess me, but Galaxy's Edge is the Star Wars land in Disneyland. It's called the Galactic Star Cruiser. Okay, do, you know what? I actually... I'm not gonna bad chess you, that's true. People like... Galaxy's Edge, right? They like the, the Rise of the Resistance ride. Or whatever it's called. It's the Star Cruiser that people don't... That, that is kind of a flop right now. I'd like to apologize. And apparently it's not even a flop. People are saying it's been sold out since it started. Oh, it just I get that everyone was filming it and I was also watching someone who had gone to the event and filmed it. But like, they're doing like their medieval times thing. The, the Empire wants to speak to you! And then they like, you know, they come up on the view screen and then everybody 
pulls up their phones to like film what's happening on the view screen and I'm they're like, getting right in the actor's face with their cameras out and stuff like that. I was like, it just seems weird to me. You don't even, un I know you're like, please stop talking about it. You don't understand that I don't do this just to gross you out. Do you know how good it feels to have gone four and a half hours without taking like a violent liquid shit? Holy cow. Even if your day is horrible right now, like on a emotional level, maybe you can look at yourself and find like some gratitude that you're hopefully not going through that. That would be, dude, that would be an insane moment. If Peter Parker was uh, going to trial for all of Spider-Man's alleged crimes against Mysterio, and then the theater reaction when they revealed Saul Goodman was his attorney, holy cow. Your Honor, would we put a dog on trial? Would we debase the ladies and gentlemen of the jury by attempting to interrogate and cross-examine a housefly? Well, show me in the code of laws that make up this great nation where it says we can put a half-man, half-spider on the stand. Um, you'd be a perfect crook. You know who's a perfect crook? Danny Ocean from the Ocean movies, D.B. Cooper. Honestly, I have a, a pet theory about D.B. Cooper. I think that he fell in, a, like as he jumped from the plane, his parachute malfunctioned. And then like right as he was about to make impact with the earth, a sinkhole opened up and he fell into the, like the core of the earth. Um, and that's why like the body and the money were never discovered. But I think that he, he was not a good criminal. He didn't get away with it. He died in a sinkhole accident right after he stole it. What's your evidence? Occam's razor. Simply the only thing that makes sense when you consider all the available evidence. Does that answer your question? <laughs> you know how like whenever you see a movie where they have like a robbery or something like that, they're always like, give me unmarked, non-sequential federal bills or whatever. Who's got the time for that? Seems crazy to me. The FBI would be there like looking up, they'd be looking at the serial number of every bill. What is the serial number? Isn't that like 16 characters long? It's a lot of work. Put all the slurp juice in a brown bag right now. That's how they catch bank robbers all the time. I think mostly they catch them because they end up saying something like, you'll never catch me alive, you copper. And then they, they, they always make one mistake, right? Like they always like, cause the way I see it, there's always one guy, maybe he's like a former junior player he was really on his way to the nhl but then he got hurt unfortunately in the draft combine and he's like straight laced and he's like we're gonna do this shit by the book okay but then there's like one guy he's more of like a jeremy renner type who's like my book is called how to fuck shit up and make impulsive decisions badly and he always they're always like they're in the van on the way to the bank and then the one guy's like just remember the number one rule we don't fire our guns the guns are just for intimidation and then jeremy renner goes in and is like what are you looking at bang bang and he shoots like a security guard that's one day away from retirement and then it's that hubris and and not adhering to the code of ben affleck that leads to their downfall later i don't think it has anything to do with like sequential uh numberings on bills that sounds ridiculous also yeah always carrying around those big sacks with the dollar signs on them what, what were they thinking who made these well okay you're right that's not the only way it could go down you're you're absolutely right there's also some situations where you've spent your entire career uh being incredibly professional and and never letting personal disputes get in the way of your higher order concerns which are your own safety and anonymity as a robber but then just deciding that wayne grow is actually the literal devil and you have to put him down because otherwise he's a loose end that'll haunt you for the rest of your life and then of course on your way out of the hotel that's where you realize that al pacino was there the whole time and you got it's a whole it, i don't want to spoil the whole movie necessarily but how about a rude biker? You see him now and then. Well, well, yeah, rude bikers. I don't know. We have a neighbor who, like, at 
Uh, I, honestly, I think we should start like a GoFundMe to get him a new motorcycle because he he always when he leaves for work at seven, he has to start it at like six six fifteen, and I guess just rev it uh, in his garage for like forty five minutes before he uh, is able to get it to come out of his driveway. But I guess like some motorcycles, you just in order to drive them, you just have to let it idle. Um, but also occasionally going So I, I think it would be nice if we could buy him like a motorcycle that works because he seems like it's a big part of his personality. So I'd like for him, his identity and his reality to overlap in a way that leads to him feeling fulfilled in his life. Sorry, a little genuine anger came over me there temporarily. I'm over it now. I'd like to apologize. You do need to let your motorcycle idle. Oh, well, I'm glad this is why I asked, because I'm ignorant to all the laws of motorcycles. So I, I also then must assume that when a light turns green, you have no choice but to throttle it like as fast as possible uh, and as loud as possible, just to let people know you're there. Especially if you're going over a bridge, right? That's actually a legal requirement. Okay, well, see, that's why I asked, because I'm ignorant to all these motorcycle laws. Motorcycle school teaches us hate against ear users. I hate that you just took my own joke away from me, because I know that the stereotype, or not the stereotype, the statement is loud pipes save lives, but like, they fucking kill my ears, dude. They fucking, they kill my ears. Like a lot. And not even when I'm driving. Sometimes I'm just like sleeping in my house and it's like 4 a.m. And then some divorced dad comes by. What were you worried? Like if I didn't hear you coming, I was going to fall out of my bed, out of my bedroom window onto the street and crush you? I don't understand. Just go to therapy, please. Sea lion? Yeah, you're not scared of this sea lion anymore. Silly. I think she's like, I could take him. Oh, there was a dad in the stroller. There was a baby bottle and there was a Pelta bottle. Yo! Like, oh my God, he's, he's one of those like the <laughs> noisy drinker. We probably, we probably ride together. He probably did the 30 minute Leanne Hainsby a uh, pop ride with in studio riders. Thank you. She brought me my water bottle. So cute. Loving the chocolate milk. She has been drinking a lot of chocolate milk. Cake That's baby. good. Cake baby. I'm a baby. She's so cute right now. Oh, oh. She's like, why are you looking at me? Why are you looking at me? She's all top to, <laughs> She's top so to bottom. Shy. Top to bottom strawberry. Why are you looking at me? It's because you're cute. Pro look. Pro look. Pro look. Fork? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I knew. I, I knew it. Full rope. <laughs> Like spoon? Yeah. Yeah, like spoon. Whoo. <laughs> ah. Ah. Can you do a T Rex impression? <laughs> so good. How about alligator? Aqua. Chomp. Chomp. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Oh, man. How about a bird? How about, what does a parrot say? <laughs> Try again. What does a parrot say? Hello. Hello. What do you see? You see Grandma Cheese? That's exactly what I heard is Grandma Cheese. Do you see Grandma Cheese? All right, she's in her own world now. Yeah. Oh, watch Peppa Pig. Watch Peachy Pig. 
Probably should grab my pig. Ah. Oh. You guys want to see something crazy? Who's Peppa Pig's brother? Who's Peppa Pig's brother? She's shy. <laughs> you've, been, you've been going at it for so long. She answered me once. Who's Peppa Pig's brother? Oh, okay, fine. We'll practice this for the next three hours when stream's over anyway. Honey, who likes dinosaurs? George. George. Who's Peppa Pig's brother? <laughs> it's a gimme. <laughs> <laughs> Answer me. High five. Yay. Hey. God, this would go off in the TikTok. Um, oh, no. oh, yeah. You yeah. Tomo's, there. Tomo's under the monitor. Not right now, though. Not right now. Oh, man. Sorry about that, but also, <laughs> you're welcome. You're going to take the water bottle? That, that does have a tendency to happen, that's for sure. No denying that. Whoa, you put it back? No, I didn't. Oh, mommy put it back. Oh, thank you. Mmm. She's just walking around Kate in a circle, drinking her chocolate milk. It's precious. It's adorable. Do you normally enjoy pooping? I got, I got to tell you, after the ordeal I've been through, I feel like meatloaf and I'm going to love her for both of us. Like every, every poop from this point onwards, I'm going to appreciate. I'm going to, I'm going to grab my poop, going to hold it tight, going to take an afternoon delight. Something always that is that is right. It's right. Why wait for the coming in? Uh, that wasn't meatloaf. Somebody can somebody Bixby up who sang "I'm Gonna Love Her" for both of us. There were two different songs referenced there. I know this is actually AP references. We may make nested references that should have been covered in the syllabus that was handed to you at the start of class. I know previously, depending on the the school districts you were in, you may have only experienced uh, one reference at a time. Well. They told you things were going to be different when you came to AP and, and buckle up because Kansas is going bye-bye. Because Kansas is going bye-bye-bye. It's a nested reference. A cipher from the Matrix, but also the NSYNC song. Hands up. I never got my syllabus. Wait, second prize is a knife block. Th uh, third prize is you're, you're fired. That's kind of... Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross mixed with Donald Trump on The Apprentice. There's two references for you. So layered. Wow, so, so much humor. The writers have been working overtime this season. Just got home excited to watch the VOD. Honestly, today's stream, there's a lot of different ways it could have gone down. I thought it went pretty well. There was a non... Oh, you piece of crap. There's honestly a non-zero chance I put my pants on stream today. And that didn't happen. So, like, that's very positive for me. Just, I, I think I should remember, like, sometimes it's like the small victories that you should just in, enjoy them. It's summer break in the U.S. Yes. So true. It's probably all of the undergraduate students at Harvard are now online playing Zoms. And, and fragging up my games. Um, you got into Harvard lore? Um, hello, my name is Medea. Of course I got into Harvard Lar. It's not the way, what do you think it is? Trying to get a reservation at Red Lobster at 615? That's a movie called Med Lurgally, <laughs> Lurgally Blonde. That's not a nested reference, that's just one. Well, I guess it's a reference to both the character known as Medea and also the movie Legally Blonde. Well, the, the franchise at this point, I suppose. Ermagerd is legally blurned too. Red, white, and blurned. It's, it's, it, 
It's a dear day of legally blurred too. Red, white, and blurred. My favorite Mervy on Blu-ray. I'm dead. Holy, holy sh I'm I'm insanely dead. That's not a real person. Like that was Liam Neeson from Taken. I that was in second place. There's no. I, I refuse to believe it's a real person. It's taken uh, some time. That's for sure. Anyway, Kate's live. I will see you uh, on Monday. See you then.